Thank you. My name is Lori Jones. I'm a student senator at American River College. And I've, we've been here before lobbying last year for SB 595, which replaced some of the funding for DSPS and EOPS, but not uh, complete restoration. Um, we are, we're a college of 35,000 students, about <clears throat> excuse me, 10% of which are DSPS students, so that's about 3,500 students. And we want to echo KPED and the Faculty Association of California Community College in their goals for increased faculty, counselors. You can't do an ed plan when you can maybe see uh, 16 students in a day for half an hour and maybe see all your workload in a year. Uh, so that's once a year for the students. Um, Let's see, we have, uh, we have a student resolution in our student senate, uh, which hopefully will pass tomorrow. So I've been told that if I send an email, I should send it to a Mark Martin. Um, so we'll, <laughs> all right, I didn't see a name tag, sorry. Uh, so we'll do, we'll do that tomorrow. Um, basically, if it says low income, textbooks, child care, counseling, they need it to get through. For the, for the DSPS students, particularly the paid note takers and the additional tutors, uh, fellow Senator Cheyenne Mendez is uh, a disabled, or I prefer the term differently abled student, and she has been paying out of pocket for private tutors, and that, uh, they shouldn't have to do that. That's not equal access. Um, so, um, and I was on the basic skills class a committee last year and 70% of the students are basic skills, so those all need um, more funding. We have over 100 colleges, so 100 million would only give, um, you know, 1 million per college, so it, it would get spread very far. Um, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Charles Stevens. I'm a student at San Jose City College, and I'm also the treasurer of the Student Senate for California Community Colleges. Um, what I want you to know this evening is that I have a learning disability. Um, <clears throat> you know, all my, all my life people have told me that I'd never get an education, that I have to be in some dead-end job, and that uh, I would never receive an education. Well, because of DSPNS and the Learning Disabilities Department, I am now um, um, an honor student through Phi Theta Kappa. Um, I, I, I'm a treasurer of an organization that serves 2.3 million California community college students. And, you know, all I really have to say to you is that restoring the funding to what it once was is much better than having flexible language in there because, you know, I'm really tired of seeing um, my colleges fight over money. And that's exactly what this is going to be. And so I agree with KPED. I think that we should have $50 million allocated to DSPNS. And, and I only say that, I'm not saying that out of uh, some bias. I'm saying, speaking out of experience of how it's helped me personally. You know, um, when people tell you all your life that you're not going to amount to nothing, you know, and then you fight for it, and then you, people have given you the tools to do that, you, you want to fight for those programs. And so that's what I'm here to do. And so I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to listening to us. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to address you. My name is Julie Thompson, and I'm from Santa Rosa Junior College, English Department faculty, and I'm president of our faculty union. And I am here, like everyone else, to ask for money for education, and uh, in particular for instruction, and I'd like to focus on full-time faculty needs, um, even though I recognize that there are a lot of other needs represented in the room. Um, the, um, I have, uh, I'm going to focus on one particular uh, reason that I think that full-time faculty um, numbers, increasing them, uh, the full-time faculty numbers, is so critical. And, and it has to do with the message that we give our students. We say, show up, work hard, get an education, and then you're prepared to you know, go, out, go out into the workforce, get a good job, make good money, have benefits, and support families, and you know, that, that message. And, um, what I believe is that by relying on part-time faculty, what we do is we model for our students that our message is not consistent with our practice. We have people in front of the classroom who have gone to college, they have earned um, advanced degrees, they have master's degrees, doctorates, and they're working part-time, oftentimes at numerous colleges, to piece together a living for themselves. And so what they demonstrate to their students is that what we're telling our students about achievement is not necessarily true and that we're not putting our money where our mouth is. I would really encourage um, this committee to um, 
to articulate that message that full-time faculty are important on all campuses. I'm full-time faculty, and what I see when I look at my part-time colleagues is that we have capable, talented people, and we're not using them to the best of their ability for serving our students. Thank you. Hello, my name is Donna Wapner. I'm a 23-year tenured full-time faculty member at Diablo Valley College, and I'm also the VP of the union there. I also have been teaching in a CTE program all these years, and I've been glad today to see how engaged all of you have been in the budget discussions and how to make the best decisions for our community colleges. But it's pretty evident that the needs have fallen over these last years due to budget issues, and with the restoring of budgets, it's a real problem when we're not restoring programs that have been proven to, be wor to work in the past. A lot of people have talked about the evidence-based categoricals of DSPS and EOPS, but another proven um, part of education is full-time faculty. And I'm going to personalize this because I've been in a CTE program for 23 years. I'm the only full-timer in my area with 12 part-timers. My students have a lot of needs. Most of them use EOPS, DSPS, tutoring, and financial aid programs. And when most of the faculty who are teaching are part-timers, they don't have the time to do advising about their field and professionalism. They're there for the class. They're great examples and great teachers in the classroom, but they, don't, they run in the evening hours after their class, and they can't spend the time with the students. They also don't know how to use the resources on campus to bring counseling into the classrooms to figure out where a lot of the other services are. And at the same time, when CTE programs have to stay up to date in curriculum development, when you don't have full timers on campus, or you don't even have a lot of full timers working in these programs, you can't keep the programs up to date or the uh, curriculum to be cutting edge. We need more full timers to not only develop CTE programs, but we need them to be running the programs and teaching the programs and advising our students in the program with the counseling programs that exist and that we already know work. And so I'm here today also to say that we really need not only to pay the part-timers who are teaching adequately, but we need to have more full-timers in our classrooms. Thank you. Hello, my name is Matt Murray, and I am an instructor at uh, Santa Rosa Junior College part-time, and uh, I thank you for your time. And I just want to echo uh, the uh, comments uh, from the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges. I stand behind them, and I also am a representative uh, for the union of uh, the faculty at my college. And uh, I just want to hope, uh, say that I hope that you will consider uh, including in the categorical funds uh, as monies for part-time faculty to help restore pay cuts to get us uh, to an equitable level. Uh, and. Uh, you know, also to think about, you know, how this is going to uh, impact uh, things like medical benefits. Uh, for example, because of the Affordable Care Act, which is well-intentioned, my um, monthly uh, premiums now just uh, almost tripled. They did double. And um, so now I've got to figure out where I'm going to get all this money uh, every month to pay for this, even in the summer when, as a part-timer, I'm not likely to work. Uh, so I just encourage you to keep our... Uh, situation in mind as you move forward with the uh, budget. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, my name is Ross Rayala. I'm a student and member of EOPS at American River College. Um, I was reading through the LAO budget package on page 9 and saw that, that the Student Success Task Force was quoted, these programs are inefficient and create unnecessary barriers for students. I'm here as an EOPS student to say this program has not only been uh, efficient in helping me succeed uh, from the additional counseling and tutoring, but has created necessary opportunities by providing priority registration so that I could get into the classes that I need so that I may transfer in a timely fashion. Uh, EOPS is one of the main catalysts in my success as a student, and I also want to point out uh, on page 11 of the agenda, uh, I notice LAO is recommending to consolidate the student support programs. Um, I think each of these programs uh, helps a di diverse group of students, and to consolidate these programs uh, would undermine the diversity of these groups. So um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you. Hello. 
Um, my name is Sammy Sanchez. I've been a, a student at Sac City College since the spring of 08. Um, it was a long time, but I literally started at the bottom of all my classes with remedial math, reading, and writing. Um, because of EOPS, I have come so far. I'm only a year away from transfer. Um, I started to go to school for just money just because I knew that I can get it. EOPS helped me realize that education was more important than that. Um, beyond just the basic services that are offered to us as far as book assistance and counseling and early registration, they help with time management and uh, accountability and responsibility. Um, because of them, I, I am able to think further down for the decisions that I make today and how they will affect me later on in life. Um, EOPS has helped me with, with my academics as well as my personal life, making, uh, helping me become a fully functioning member, member of society. Um, so I'm just here to say that uh, the funding needs to be restored back to the programs that help uh, and that are proven, that have proven to to work and help students achieve their educational goals. Um, so please help EOPS by help help EOPS help students. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ariel. I'm, I'm currently go to Sac City. I am in EOPS. Um, when I first started at uh, Sac City, I did not know what I was doing, and when I found EOPS, they helped me find exactly what I needed to do to, um, to transfer to, uh, to my college that I want to go to. <laughs> Please fully restore the um, financial funding for EOPS. Hello, my name is Irma Rodriguez and I'm a proud past EOPS student and, and I've gone for a full circle and now I'm an EOPS coordinator. There is a question by one of the esteemed assembly uh, members asking why are there community, uh, excuse me, categorical programs still in community colleges? Community colleges are the educational social justice programs in the state. We enroll 100% of the individuals that apply to our colleges. And so categorical programs are on our campuses to help those individuals that perhaps didn't do as well in the K through 12, uh, could not overcome some of the shortcomings of the K through 12, perhaps made some t you know, choices uh, in their past that now they're trying to start anew and come back and get an education. And so the categorical programs are there to help specialized communities. And I would uh, really invite the LAO to come to some of our campuses and see how we work collegially and collaboratively with our uh, fellow categorical programs. We try to provide seamless service delivery, reduce uh, du duplication, and maximize our resources. Um, I think one of the things that's important to s state is that EOPS has been duplicated, or is trying to be duplicated when the esteemed uh, CEO from, I believe, Contra Costa stated that they're wanting to use some of this flexible funding that would be taken away from categor categorical programs such as EOPS to develop a summer bridge programs, cohort learning, tutoring, counseling. She's talking about EOPS. So it really, it's, it's disheartening to me that the, uh, the position or the recommendation would be to take away uh, funding from an already existing proven program and establish programs that replicate us instead of restoring us 100% so we can serve more students. As a coordinator of Sacramento City College, when we were fully funded uh, before the 2009 cuts, we served almost 1,700 students. Right now, after the cuts, we serve a little under 1,000. Restoring us, we could reach 700 more students and more. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Delissa Garza. I, I work for Sacramento City College EOPS program. And I just want to say that uh, I support everything everybody says here in restoring funding and also not doing the flexible plan, um, flexible spending. Um, but most of all, I am the product or, or the success of, of EOPS. And I'd like to see students that are here that are, are also um, supporting us to succeed as like I did, as well as the ones that precede them. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Andrea Wethington, and I am currently an EOPS student at Sacramento City College. Um, I stand before you not only an EOPS student, but also a CalWORKS student and a DSPS student. Um, I got into CalWORKS because I have a 10-year-old daughter, and I'm a single parent, and I got into DSPS because I have um, seven years in recovery from a chemical dependency problem. And it is upsetting to me, I think, to hear that what we're looking to do is to cut programs that ultimately help individuals like myself succeed. When I first started at Sacramento City College, I did not believe that I was going to be able to even 
complete one semester, let alone be in the position that I'm in now. I have a 4.0 GPA. I'm Phi Theta Kappa. I am working for EOPS. I am getting ready to transfer to CSUS, and my intention is to give back to the community that gave to me the, the success that I have today. I love my standing within the EOPS program. I love the, the programs that they offer. I think it's important to state that there's nothing exclusive about the EOPS program. Just about anybody, the, the broad base of students that you're trying to reach, any of those students in one way or another can qualify for the EOPS program and therefore take advantage of all of the opportunities that the program has to offer. So I can't understand why there would be any real reason to not restore 100% funding and to even furthermore take 25% of whatever is being allocated at this point and send it elsewhere. Anybody that applies just about gets into our program I would know I work in the office, um, as long as they do the things that we ask them to do, which is jump through the hoops, they keep them on track so that they can become successful, productive members of society and taxpayers. And I believe that that's really what the idea of not just the community colleges are, but all colleges in general. So I'm standing in front of you as a, a current success and a future success story of the community college system and of the EOPS program, the DSPS program, and the CalWORKs program. And I'm begging you to reconsider the reallocating of 25% of those funds and restore full funds to those programs. So thank you. Good afternoon. I am Danita Scott Taylor. I'm the Director of Student Support Services at San Joaquin Delta College. I have the honor uh, to represent both the EOPS Care Program and DSPS, uh, Disability Support Programs and Services, on my campus. Collectively, we serve probably 2,500 students, uh, which is down almost half in both programs since the budget cuts. That's an important criteria. Uh, I think of two things as I listen to the students plead with you um, to remain, I watch Scandal. I don't know if anybody else in here watched Scandal, but be the gladiators for those who have the least. Um, we cannot pretend that every student starts on a level playing field. The Student Success and Support Program is a great initiative. It borrowed much of what it does from EOPS and CARE, but you can't throw that program and assume that it will meet the needs of every student that walks through the gate. We know that DSP EOPS, EOPS Care, and Cal Works work. EOPS Care has been in existence over 45 years. God rest Senator Alquist, who in his wisdom authored Senate Bill 164, which established EOPS Care throughout the state of California. It is no accident that even in times of plenty, those funds were protected. Because the reality is, if the college is intended to do what it must do, it accepts the funds to do what it must do. You don't have to uh, pretend that you're going to take funds from one hand, put it in another hand to serve some other students if your intent is to do what the funds were intended to do. So I, I believe it is a ruse um, to talk about block grant funding. I believe it is a ruse to talk about flexibility because if the intention is to do the right thing, then one simply has to do it. They don't need... Uh, flexibility to do that. Um, I do want to read a couple of statements from a student who says, I think it's sad that any portion of EOPS funds will be cut. I know it will directly affect students like myself who are trying to complete their entry-level college requirements in order to transfer. Without the support of EOPS, I've been, uh, with the support of EOPS, I've been able to reach my goals in two uh, years. I'm not sure how long it would have taken otherwise. This is our student trustee at San Joaquin Delta College. Another student um, who wanted to be here but who did not want to miss class, and we supported that, said if you decide to make any funny changes, it should be to add more funds to our EOPS care program. I'm going to add DSPS and CalWORKs. Not take away 25% of the money, which is about what we received last year. Uh, EOPS care students are already struggling. Why in the world would you want to add to our current burdens by taking away resources we need for basic, basic necessities, books, 
child care, getting to class, getting tutoring. The tutorial centers are wonderful, but they're like SSSP. They're trying to serve everyone, which means that the students that require more assistance cannot get what they need in that large arena. That is why we have categorical programs. It was no accident. Please continue to support those programs. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you for letting me have some of your time today. Uh, my name is Jamie Lee Arterberry. I'm a 41-year-old single uh, mother. Um, I have been trying to get an education since 1998, and when all three kids were home, I couldn't really afford to go, and I went in between my work schedule or the kids' schedule. Um, my life has taken some really big turns in the last few years, and I've had the opportunity to go back to school, and the EOP and S and CARE programs have been amazing in my journey uh, back to school. They're helping me with books. They're helping me with meals. They're helping me to find help with child care for my daughter. Um, I want to be able to complete this journey, and if the budgets are cut or there's restrictions for these programs, it's going to make it even more difficult for me to be able to do this. Um, the guidance that I'm getting from the counselors, they're going up and above what they're required to do with me, and they're facilitating my journey through this education to help me become successful so that I'm not at a, a city college for so long. I've been there since 1998, like I said, and I would really love to graduate, and finally I'm having this opportunity, and they're there for me. Um, so I'm asking you today, please do not flex EOPS and please restore our program fully. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ellis Bird. I am a 48-year-old freshman at the College of Alameda. Decided to go back to school and get that education. Uh, as you can tell, I'm from Britain and I've uh, lived in America for 28 years. I came out here this year and realized the opportunities were much better in California than they were in Ohio, where I spent most of my time. Um, I suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome. I was a victim of two IRA bombings when I was younger. So things have been very difficult for myself. And with the help of my teachers that are back here, um, the, um, the classes that I'm in are helping me to get back on track, give me that little bit of confidence that I needed Everything that I need to get back into regular society, into school life, and actually really enjoying it. I, um, I have an A. I'm holding an A straight through all my classes. I'm doing very well. Um, the problem being, at the College of Alameda, our classrooms are just falling apart. Our computers are beat up. They're very old. They're the very old style, big, thick monitor ones. Um, the chairs are breaking. I mean, it's, real, it's a real struggle each day for um, the teachers and ourselves to be able to sit in a classroom, because we actually share the classroom with another class. Um, this is an example of what um, is going on at these community colleges. And I've heard a lot of people say in the, the, um, the 500 million, oh, sorry, the 50 million, 500 million would be nice, wouldn't it? Eh? 50 million. Um, to be put back in the DSPS. I think that would be perfect. I mean, I'm sure if any of you guys, even though there's only two of you left, if um, any of you guys want to come have a look, I imagine you're welcome, and actually see how this thing really operates. And um, I tell you what, my teachers are wonderful, they're fantastic, and uh, they've really given me a, a sense that I need to drive at my older age to get that degree. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Sonia Steptoe, and I'm in my first year at San Jose City College. So I'm a freshman there, I'm majoring in ADS. Um, I'm also a participant in the EOPS program as well as the DSPS, DSPS program. Um, and I stand before you today asking for restoration of our funds, restoration of funds in these programs and not to adapt to flexible uh, language. Um, I'm a single parent with low income, and part of being a student requires books, books and supplies which are essential and also expensive also expensive. The EO, EOPS program have assisted me with book vouchers, supplies, as well as a, a plan. 
an educational plan to, in reaching my goal, my educational goal. I have put off my dream of furthering my education because of what I was told growing up that I, um, that I wasn't smart enough and that I wouldn't be able to afford it. I have regained focus of my dream and I ask that, um, that you just help, help in restoring the funds so that I can accomplish my dreams. Um, the EOPNS program and programs alike are beneficial and they help people like myself to turn their dreams into reality. Again, yes to restoration and no to flexible language. This is not a plea for your sympathy, but only for your understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Martin, uh, you both have indulged me with some time already on this issue, but I'm here on behalf of the California Professional Firefighters on the issue of apprenticeship. Uh, you will notice in your list that the at least half of the scheduled apprenticeship appropriation, appropriation received the most dramatic cut of 53%. We're looking for restoration, and we're also looking for the end of over a decade of flexibility block grant. They're old ideas. They don't provide solutions to create better outcomes in these very important programs. So let's shelve those and, and talk about real solutions. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chuck Bradshaw, and I'm a student at Merced Community College. And I've heard a lot about people with problems, but they also help the people that excel. Me, I found myself after 20 years working without a job, I was a construction worker. So my only option really was to start a new career, so I went to college. In two years, I'm going to graduate with an AS degree this semester. I'm going to transfer to Stanislaus State, and in one year, I'll be able to get a bachelor's, because I took so many classes already due, due to the counseling that I received through EOPS. Anna McCall works student. It's you know, also the people that can go through, they help them too. And through there, I've been able to excel. I've, I'm a member of AG, Alpha Gamma Sigma Honor Society. I'm an Ag Ambassador. And I started the recycling initiative on our campus, because it was none. And it, you know, something needed to be done. But I also got uh, nominated for the Ed Walsh Outstanding Service Award. And all this stuff has been because the EOPS has helped me from the beginning take budget my time correctly and move through the college system, you know, quickly. And thank you very much and have a nice evening. Hello, how are you? Um, I want to thank everybody that stayed so, and I also want to thank you two that stayed. Um, my name is Oscar Quiroz Mendrano, and I'm a student at San Jose City College. Um, it's, I support what's going on with the whole... Um, Oh, I forgot the name, sorry. We're Star EOPNS and DSP. Um, uh, my parents immigrated back in 1990. I was born in uh, 91, sorry, I was born in 92. Um, my parents are from Mexico and they're immigrants. My brother was born over there and immigrated here with my parents. Um, I grew up here, I grew up in Mountain View, and since I was, before preschool, I was labeled as a DS, uh, disabled student, or because that's my spe speech impediment my processing day, and all these other things that have problems with me. And then, well, through the educational system, I've been racially profiled, I've been discriminated against my disabilities from preschool to 12th grade. When I entered 12th grade, I had a third grade reading level, which is pretty low, isn't it? By graduating, I got, a tw I got 11th grade reading level. And that wasn't due to the educational system, I'll tell you that one. And then when I entered college, I was nervous because of what I've been taught in the schools that I wasn't able to learn and I wasn't able to achieve anything because of who I am, colored, and my disabilities. But with DSP and with DSP, EOP, and S, I have overcame those and I am achieving my dreams to become a citizen, a taxpayer, instead of things that I would have proving to my teachers that have told me those things, those negative things. And I have known, I know that a lot of students also have gone through the same problems. So I really, I hope that the DSP and the EOPNS continue to help those students that also are the next generation to change this country. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Lenise Brooks. Um, I am a veteran, a single parent, and an EOPS student. I am completely, I am currently completing my second semester after being in the military for eight years. You tend to keep those habits, 
So adjusting back to civilian, civilian life has been very difficult for me. Um, I was actually getting ready to give up on college until EOPS. Um, being a single parent, you tend to have to juggle bills, get necessities for your children, transportation, and the list will go on. EOPS has helped me buy books from, for the semester to keep me ahead in class. They have also given me one-on-one -on -one time with the counselors, which before EOPS, I felt like I was rushed in and out. They have given me the time and they were able to reassure me that I was on the right track to graduating. Um, I understand everything that's going on with my education now that I have time with the counselors. So I, I really, really hope that you guys can restore everything that's going on because everybody is suffering from this. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Good evening. My name is Ann Shara. I'm a full-time student at San Jose City College since 2012, and a story we've heard before, single mother, all three programs, DSPS, EOP, and S. These programs have allowed me to have this chance to get into maybe someday a position where you are. So I ask you to please erase <laughs> the language that keeps these programs uh, alive don't allow flexible language. Please restore them to full capacity so we can continue to live our dreams, those of us who are still dreaming and aiming to have a life that's better. Thank you. Good evening, thank you for your time. I know it's almost dinner time, so I'll be brief. Uh, my name is Valentin Garcia. I'm representing not only uh, the students at San Jose City College, but I'm also a product of EOPNS, um, EAOPS while I was in high school, and uh, EOPNS at the CSU level. I'm a product of the program. Uh, so I come to you like many of the uh, other students are here, like Sammy, Chuck, Adrian, um, to not support, not adopt, flexible language and to restore funding uh, to what it was before. Um, we, we really want to appreciate your time again, um, but not only are we giving the students the, the books, all right, uh, helping with tuition and the tutoring, but um, we're also giving them confidence. And the confidence is something that you can't just give right away. So these programs um, are offering more than the funding, right? The confidence so that they can move forward uh, in their life and in their education and career goals. That's all. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Ronald Harris. I'm a student at Alameda College in um, Alameda. And uh, before I went to Alameda, I was um, at a different college. And I signed up for their DSPS program, but I, I wasn't, um, I, I was, I got into the program and then, but I wasn't able to be seen by a, a, a counselor, nor did um, I receive the accommodations for like the classes, like for example, the note takers or the, or like the test accommodations that I get now. Uh, and this was in 2010, around the time when the budget cuts first got cut. And then, um, so I tried Alameda College, and then I went, just went to see a regular uh, counselor, and then I was telling him my issue, and he just told me to go uh, to DSPS. And then, um, so I said, okay, I'll try it one more time. And then they got me all settled in and everything. And then I'm an epileptic, so when um, I had a seizure at home, and then I um, busted my uh, face open right here, and then I had to get stitches, and I ended up missing um, two weeks of class. One class I had to drop because I couldn't catch up with it. But um, the accommodations really helped me because um, the, because of the note takers that they had. They uh, Allow me to read over the read over the notes and um, retake the tests that I missed, and um, redo the um, homework that I missed, and um, it really helped me. So, and the EOPS is is also a good um, subject, also because a lot of a lot of students we don't get our books until like the middle of the semester, if you don't have those um, subject those um, 
those programs in session, and by the time the middle of the semester come around, you already didn't fail behind, like so far that you can't catch up to no, nothing. So uh, if you kindly just consider putting these things back in place, uh, thank you. Good afternoon. I understand that you have a two-minute limit. Bear with me. It's going to take me two minutes to tell you my name, okay? My name is Debbie Thomas, and I am a disabled student at the College of Alameda. And I'm grateful for the program because I went to sleep one night and woke up three weeks later from my coma. Um, I went for all the necessary medical rehab, but I had some issues when my brain had a brain injury. I found out later that I had um, learning disabilities, as well as my speech, what you can tell. But so going to college at Alameda, I learned how to adapt to my learning disability. I learned about how my brain is not working. You know, I had to learn how to um, change things around so that I can prosper in my classes. So I am very grateful for that program. And there are a lot of people that are in class with me are also grateful for the program. Um, but we need funding. That's the bottom line. And um, because the software used for the um, computers to help to learn about your memory or help your memory or put things in order or the different things that you guys do automatically with no problem. We struggle with those things. And the software used for on the computer that's outdated. It's old and needs to be updated. That costs money, costs a lot of money. The, pro, the computer itself needs new computers, need new chairs, need better adaptability um, desks and what have you. We need full-time um, office um, staff. We need full-time, well-equipped, qualified teachers that's in there five days a week all day long and then they because they work very hard it's not easy working with people with disabilities whether it's, it's physical or whether it's, it's a um, brain injury or whether it's a learning thing it's really difficult um to work with us and not that we're hard it's that we take more time you have to be slow with us you have to be patient with us you have to be understanding with us and so we need funding. We don't need, I don't know a lot about the statistics. I don't know what 3% look like. All I know is that whatever you give us, it's it got to be a lot enough to buy new everything. We need an overhaul. Like you take your car in for overhaul, we need an overhaul. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Hughes, and I'm, I'm a student at Mary College, and I'm part of DSPS. Um, I'm a returning, I, re, I left Mary some years ago, and I came back. But when I left, before, when I was there before, there was a computer lab. We have our own little lab and tutors and stuff. But that's been cut. When you cut it, it kind of, now we only have it twice a week. I need it, we need it every day because when you go to the learning center, they can't really, you're not going to get the attention that you really need. Also, we need, instead of, we need, I know it's, it's good to have part-time counselors, but we also need a full-time counselor and a full-time coordinator because, you know, we all need assistance. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Gino Perezol, and um, I am an OIF, OEF veteran, um, 06 through 07, and 09 through 010. Um, I am a, a DSPS uh, student at College of Alameda, and uh, besides uh, 
Besides my learning disabilities that I uh, suffered with before, I was also diagnosed with PTSD, um, which makes uh, coming back to an academic environment really challenging for me. And the only reason why I'm able to do that and have some success is because of the support that I am receiving at my campus from my teachers and uh, counselors at the SPS. And uh, I'm, here to, um, I'm here to ask you to restore funding uh, back to, uh, e um, to DSPS and DOPS so that um, students like me can uh, continue with their education and become uh, productive members of society and uh, make uh, further contributions. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Phyllis Tappy, and I am an instructor with the DSPS program at College of Alameda. Um, I'll be very brief. You've heard from a number of our students from College of Alameda and the Peralta system. Um, basically, I fear flexible funding. I support KPED stance that any money that you earmark for DSPS should go to DSPS. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Helene Maxwell, and I'm the coordinator for programs and services for students with disabilities at College of Alameda. I am very fortunate and very blessed to have my job and to work with students like the ones that you've heard from this evening and many, many others. There's over 118,000 DSPS students who participate in the program statewide. So some of the students were here this evening and this afternoon. Many of them are in their classes, but... Um, their voices need to be heard. Their voices are what's most important. Their self-advocacy is what's most important. And I'll tell you, you know, our funding was cut uh, by over 40% five years ago. And as the economy is starting to pick up, I'm thinking, well, now's the time, now's the time. Then I look at the, the, the governor's proposal, $100 million to equity. I'm like, wait a minute, I know what's in our equity plan. Our equity plan uh, shows the numbers of how many students of color, how many students with disabilities, and how many men and women are served by the college. The DSPS program is a student success program. It's an equity program. It has been around since the mid-70s, and as someone mentioned, we are audited every year. We are accountable for every dollar that we get to make sure that it's used appropriately, and EOPS is similar. So the idea of taking, now that the funds, funding is being restored to the budget overall, the idea of taking $100 million and kind of vaguely calling it equity money makes absolutely no sense. So what we're asking in DSPS is that $50 million of that equity money be designated specifically to DSPS. It would make us whole, and we would be able to, again, um, ad adequately serve all of our students. There's no cap to the number of students we serve. We serve every student who comes in. But what we've been doing so far is not sustainable. We need those additional funds to make things equitable for all of the students statewide. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nick, and I'm an EOPS student from City College of San Francisco. I'm currently working at EOPS also. I'm here to tell you that um, an example of how much w good work EOPS is doing at the community college level. Through EOPS, I'm telling you that I'm standing here this evening, and I'm ready to transfer thanks to EOPS, and I'm begging you to restore the full fund for EOPS. And uh, before I get into the program, uh, they, uh, they used to have uh, tutoring, and they used to have a computer lab, and by the time that I get, uh, I get into the program, all those services were already cut due to the budget cut. So if you can do something, I'm begging you, to revise your budget and take care of, of it. Thank you very much. Good evening, I'm Dr. Eliezer Yala Austin and I'm a product of EOPS in the community college system. I'm currently the department chair of EOPS, the City College of San Francisco. Uh, I became the director in fall of 2012 and um, I've 
we've had to develop a wait list because we've had over 800 students who've applied and we didn't have any space for the program. Currently, we will only have 200 spaces for the fall semester. With the restoration, we'll be able to serve students. We used to serve 1,500 students before the budget cuts. Right now, we're serving a little under 1,000. Um, this program is successful. It is a model program. It is not a silo. It's an effective program that is accountable, that is proved, has a proven record, and this, this name calling of programs like EOPS and DSPS and CalWORKs at silos is wrong. Silos is not an organizational name. Organizations are called departments, are called programs. And so I hope that the legislative office will stop using the word silo. It is not friendly. It attacks successful programs and it, it's misrepresenting of the program. Um, again, restore EOPS to the 2008 levels, restore DSPS and fund programs like CalWORKs and other programs that help underserved students to be successful. It's imperative. I have many family members and friends that have not been successful because these programs were cut. I have uh, brothers and sisters who have learning disabilities. I too have disabilities. I was able to overcome it on my own, but there are many other students and uh, community members that are not. They need services like DSPS and EOPS and CalWORKs. Thank you. Hi. My name is Melissa Luna. I am a current student at Sacramento City College in my last semester. I am Latina. I was raised by a single mom in a low-income background. I am first generation and I'm the first in my family to go to college. Now in my first semester when I was choosing my classes, I took a full load because I was ready to work hard, but half of the classes that I was taking were unnecessary, which I didn't know until I became a participant in EOPS. It's proven to be extremely beneficial not only to me but for other students. They have a wonderful counseling program that goes above and beyond for their students. They told me about the new AAT degree program on my campus which has, will help me even after I transfer out. With their guidance and support I have been able to complete all of my transfer and gen ed requirements and will earn two degrees in two years at Sac City College and I feel prepared to transfer in the fall. EOPS is highly accountable and proven effective and I hope that you keep stories like mine in mind and ask you to protect and restore funds to EOPS and um, they work and I'm the proof. Thank you for listening. Thank you all for the stamina to uh, last this long and hear all of this testimony. I appreciate that. I'm Jim Mailer. I'm president of the Community College Council of the California Federation of Teachers. We represent the majority of the community college faculty within the state of California. And I'm just here to speak in support of what you've heard from all of the students. We wholly support the augmentation to EOPS, DSPS programs, um, as well as I think another focus needs to be success for all students in addition to those students where during the budget cut times, how we save money throughout the state is by not hiring um, replacement faculty and staff as those people retired or resigned from the districts. That's how we were able to make it ends meet during the budget crisis. Now that we're trying to um, meet all of these mandates that have been put on us by the state in order to ensure student success, we don't have the staff in order to do it successfully. So we really need some money earmarked to hire not only more full-time faculty, but also full-time classified staff because no matter which district you go to or which department you go visit, you'll see there are three people doing the work of five. And the state chancellor's office pretty much summarized what you also see on every single college site, that you have what used to be uh, staff or faculty of 80 some odd people now whittled down to 20 or 30. So if you really want us to be successful in the community colleges, we need to earmark some money to raise up the full-time uh, numbers for staff and faculty as well so that we can get the job done that we're intended to do. Thank you again for your time and thanks for your stamina. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for all of your stamina. Uh, have a safe trip home. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>